Bless the Lord, my soul, and bless God's holy name. Bless the Lord, my soul, who leads me into life. Bless the Lord, my soul, and bless God's holy name. Bless the Lord, my soul, who leads me into life. Good morning and welcome to prayers this Monday morning. And I'm glad you can join us as we seek God's face and prepare ourselves for this day. Or if you're joining us at the end of the day, you're reaching a conclusion in your day. But it's always good at the beginning, in the middle or at the end to come into the presence of God and be present to him as he is present to us. So I'm going to use the, um, the Natiao prayer book, the green book, and we'll just say a few words from that. We'll also have a reading of scripture. And then there'll be a reflection from um, Gift and Task by Walter Brueggemann. And then we'll just spend some time in prayer and there'll be a space as usual for you to be able to bring your own personal prayers before God too. So let's just be still before him right now. Hallowed be your name on earth as in heaven. Kia tapu to ingoa, ki runga ki tifunua. Kia rite ano ki tu tarangi. Always be joyful. Pray continually. Give, Give thanks, thanks whatever, whatever happens. happens. Hear Jesus' words. When you do a kindness, hide from your left hand what your right is doing. Your good deed must be secret. When you pray, pray privately alone. When you fast, don't make a show of it. Don't do it to be seen. And your father who sees in secret will reward you. Would any of you who are parents give your child a wetter when asked for a fish? Bad as you are, you know what to give your children. How much more will the heavenly father give to those who ask? Believe, Believe what, what Jesus, Jesus says. God, God is, is generous. generous. God, God is, is good. good. Our scripture reading today comes from near the end of the book of Romans, uh, chapter 16, beginning at verse 1. I commend to you our sister Phoebe, a deacon of the church at Senkare, so that you may welcome her in the Lord as is fitting for the saints, and help her in whatever she may require from you, for she has been a benefactor of many and of myself as well. Greet Prissa and Aquila, who work with me in Christ Jesus, and who risk their knee necks for my life, to whom not only I give thanks, but also all the churches of the Gentiles. Greet also the church in their house. Greet my beloved Epinatus, who was the first convert in Asia for Christ. Greet Mary, who has worked very hard among you. Greet Andronicus and Junia, my relatives who were in prison with me. They are prominent among the apostles, and they were in Christ before I was. Greet Ampeliatus, my beloved in the Lord. Greet Urbanus, our co worker in Christ, and my beloved Stachys. Greet Apollos, who is approved in Christ. Greet those who belong to the family of Aristobulus. Greet my relative Herodian. Greet those in the Lord who belong to the family of Narcissus. Greet those workers in the Lord, Typhonia and Typhosa. Greet the beloved Persis who has worked hard in the Lord. Greet Rufus chosen in the Lord and greet his mother a mother to me also. Greet Aceronetus, Phlegon, Hermes, Patrobas, Hermas, and the brothers and sisters who are with them. Greet Philogus, Julia, Nereus, and his sister Olympus, and all the saints who are with them. 
greet one another with a holy kiss. All the churches of Christ greet you. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. Thanks be, be to God. God. I'm just glad that's not one of those readings you have to read out on a Sunday morning with all those names. Thanks, Pixie. Just going to read um, a reflection from Walter Brueggemann on uh, Romans 16. I once spoke with Hans Walter Wolf, a distinguished Old Testament professor at the University of Heidelberg. He had been a young pastor in a confessing church in Germany in the 1930s, when that small community of courageous people withstood Hitler and National Socialism. I asked him what resources they had to sustain their resistance. He answered quickly. We prayed and sang and we wrote many letters to each other. We know that the early church sang and prayed, are any among you suffering? That they should pray, are any cheerful? They should sing songs of praise, as James chapter 5 verse 13. And Paul himself is the champion letter writer. All three actions suggest a vigorous community solidarity in which members uphold each other in difficult circumstances. Such actions assure each person that I am not alone. The final chapter in Romans is remarkable because it contains no theological argument or even pastoral advice. It is simply a greeting in which Paul remembers and names church companions for whom he is grateful. Many he simply names. Some of them he recalls for spe quite specific reasons. Paul is a connector among actual people who are living out their faith in concrete ways. This text suggests to me that concrete effort in connecting the church in its parts is urgently important. Such letters of friendship in the church constitute care packages of gratitude and hope. It is no wonder that Paul can say of his beloved church members, you are a letter of Christ, which he writes in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 1 to 3. Is a prayer that goes with this reflection. For the goodly fellowship of the church, we give you thanks. We name in your presence sisters, brothers and saints by whose faith and witness we are sustained. In his name. Amen. Amen. Now we're going to come and reflect on the, the day. And we'll start with our examen and we'll allow just a moment's pause between to think ahead for the day to day and the different things that are taking place in it and what God might want to say to us and do through us today to others. Today is a fresh day. It is a good day because you Lord have made it. Therefore it is full of possibilities and hope. Jesus you are our source. Help, Help us, us to live, live the day, day with, with you in the centre. You call us together as your body. Help, Help us, us to share, share the day well with others. others. Yours is a revolution of love. Help, Help us, us to share, share good news, news with, with the last, the lost and, and the least. Amen. Amen. And now let's spend a few moments lifting the needs of ourselves and the world to Christ. And we'll leave some time for you to speak out the names of people, particularly on your hearts. But let's start first by lifting ourselves to God. Just as we are, we come to him. Heavenly Father God, we thank you that you are always more willing to listen than we are to pray. We come this morning just as we are. So thankful for the all that you have done in our lives 
but very aware of the times when we struggle, when we're frightened, when we're overwhelmed, when we're lonely, when we're hurting, when we're angry, and when we're sad. We thank you too for those times of inexplicable joy, beauty, and love. We thank you for memories. And we thank you for everyone who has surrounded us through our lives, especially those for good, who have helped us to understand who you've made us to be. And we lift to you ourselves and ask that you would help us to be more and more like you. Deepen our desire to read your word, creating us a thirst for learning and growing in our walk with Christ. And now in a moment of quiet, we lift those private thoughts that we have about ourselves that we want to present to God alone. We also pray for our families and for those who are dear to us and close to us. We think of those who are uh, we share the same city with or the same street and ask that you be with them. But we also hold especially before you those in um, another part of the world um, uh, who are our loved ones and that uh, we've been unable to see apart from Skype or FaceTime. We ask that you be with them and protect them, keep them in good health, especially since other parts of the world, uh, the COVID-19 virus is still very prolific. We pray that you watch over our loved ones. We also pray that you would help us to continue to be in touch with them and to support them. We pray your blessing upon them and that they may flourish and grow and they may know your presence with them. And whatever they're doing, in relationships and friendships or work or whatever, that you would bless their work, bless their life, bless their relationships, and keep them and us always close to you and close to each other. We ask this for your glory. Amen. Amen. And now we think a bit wider, not least our church families, wherever they are, and we ask for your blessing on the leaders and all who participate together, whether they're new to the community or they've been there since time immemorial. And we ask, Lord, that we would grow in fellowship and love for one another and support and encouragement that our places of worship would not just be buildings, they would be families, Fano, that would be welcoming and gracious places for people to feel safe, to grow in their walk with Christ. And in that way too, we pray for our neighborhoods, those round about us who we know and those we've only just seen across the street. We pray for our city and we ask that you would bring justice and peace and joy and opportunities for people to grow and link together and belong. And we ask too, as we head towards the election in New Zealand, that there would be a thoughtful reflection on all the issues that are being presented. There would be care and concern for the individuals as well as for the society. And that there would be wise judgments made by all in authority. We lift all of this to you in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. We pray also for situations in other parts of the world, mm. uh, particularly those places of brokenness, of violence, of destruction, famine, and of deep suffering. We pray for those caught on borders, longing to be free. We pray for those in places where there's persecution because of uh, 
other beliefs or other faith or or a lack of freedom we pray also that you be with the aid agencies and organizations that seek to support those in those places of brokenness give them comfort and encouragement and support and may they know your blessing and we pray for those who can do something about it those in positions of leadership and authority we pray that they may have the courage to bring about the changes that are needed to help us love one another in a deeper way across the world mm. that makes towards neighborliness, equality, freedom and justice and peace. And Lord, we pray that you'd hear our cry to you and we pray for a better world. In Jesus' name, amen. And now we'll just take a moment for you to lift up the names of those who are particularly on your heart. And I want to pray especially for Margaret Poynton that you would continue to encourage her, mm. our missionary link in Papua New Guinea with CMS. And now let's all lift in our own times and hearts those who are concerned to us. And shall we say together the Lord's Prayer? Our, Our Father, Father in heaven, heaven hallowed be your, your name. Your, your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth, earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. God, grant us the serenity to accept the things we cannot change, the courage to change the things that we can, and the wisdom to know the difference. And Lord, we pray that you be with us today, and the light that shines on us from you, may it shine through us out to others, that the blessing that we receive from you we could be a blessing to others too and bring them hope in this world. Mm. And may we know your peace, your joy, your love and your goodness flowing in us and through us to others. We offer our day to you and our week to you mm. in the name of Jesus. Mm. Amen. Amen. Thanks so much for joining us today uh, for our prayers. We hope you have a really good day and that the Lord bless you and keep you and use you today to be a blessing to others. Mm. We'll see you later in the week. Thanks for joining us. Bye. Goodbye.